Today, I'm gonna let my good friend Charles Scott of Bad Robot, yes, that bad robot, take over the channel and host an episode all about how he uses guitar to create movie and television soundscapes. And I'm gonna like make a couple with him. You know, like make a movie thing, sort of. Not really, but kind of. You'll like it, just watch it. I'm uh, Charles Scott the Fourth. I run the music department at Bad Robot uh, here in Santa Monica, California. My job, um, you know, mostly relates to music for television and film on the project that Bad Robot is working on. So, you know, it may be uh, on a TV series or in a pilot, uh, do, handling music supervision, which is for those not in the know, is like you know, both finding music we want to use, like existing recordings, songs, and stuff. Needle, we'll call them needle drops sometimes, and then it often may carry over into uh, the soundtrack, like if we're going to release a soundtrack for a show as well. So that's sort of one kind of side of things. And then the other side is more uh, you know, composing music and producing music. So, you know, whether it's for a video game or, or, or a feature or whatever, um, maybe even working with, with an artist on original songs that are going to, uh, you know, appear somewhere in a, in a show, that kind of thing. Well, let's see, favorite gear slash gear I use all the time. Sort of the basis of the sound going in. Um, it's guitar through the pedal board, but there's nothing turned on right now and then it's being routed by way of the uh, the switchblade to the uh, this guy my, my little sort of dumbbell based amp that uh, that I built and then that's going into the the UA the aux which is just this kind of amazing combination of like a load box and an attenuator but then you know, speaker simulation and mic simulation and some onboard effects like you know delay and a plate reverb and stuff certainly for like a sort of straightforward guitar tones before you get into all the crazy effects. Um, these two right here kind of do that. You know, this rack and any of the stuff in it is set up in such a way that if I have to edit a tune that had a specific tone on it, I know it's just not going to be a problem at all to get that exact thing back. But yeah, I mean, just, just playing with, with the aux and just all the different speaker options. Here's some ambient presets. And that's just using the built-in delay and verb in the aux for, for all those, those sort of trails. How does music affect the emotions, the feelings, and the pace of a film? Working backwards, certainly the pace of a film, I mean, it, it's always weird to watch, like, like, even to just mute the music track on something, like, if, you know, a film that you feel like, or, or an episode of something that you think is working really well, and then you mute the music, and like, it's like pumping, you know, just like putting the brakes on. Obviously, lots of people will say, you know, that sometimes the best scores are ones that you don't even really notice that they're happening, or it's not intentionally drawing your attention to it. If something important has happened between two characters, or someone has just said something, it's almost like it can keep that thought in your mind long enough till you get to the next thing that happens, you know? Um, so it can be a connective tissue and, you know, Return of the Jedi, like Yoda dying, like, you know, in Return of the Jedi and like, there's so little, you know, dialogue that happens there and it's like, it's just that, it's that Yoda theme and that Luke theme and like, the emotional side of that stuff is pretty obvious when it's working. You know, having played in bands and stuff and, and, and you know, worked in, on, on songs versus, you know, film score, it's like, I feel like a song is about, you know, oftentimes about packing a whole bunch of stuff into this really short kind of concise thing and obviously it's very rhythmic it's all like arrangements and you're sort of you're you're yeah you're trying to kind of almost have a little beginning middle and end story in three minutes or four minutes or however long the song is and then the score you know like from one piece of music and a score to the next like you know you could have a five minute long cue for for a i don't know a very like slow or tense scene that maybe has you know one instrument or two instruments that are just barely doing anything but like something like a chord change, like literally like, you know, the bass note moves, that can be like a momentous like event in the middle of a cue, you know, especially if you've sort of established like a, a, a mood and stuff. And, you know, you'll change chords, f you know, four times in, 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 you know, in two bars, whatever, in, in, in a pop song. And, and there are score cues like that, but then there are also these things where it's like, okay, we're just, oh, we're just doing this. And there's some little ticking percussion thing and it's gonna just do that for five minutes. And then this other thing is slowly, slowly building over like 32 bars, like, so the, the, the time scale, it's almost like you're like zooming out on the time scale. What if there's a character? The character's walking through the forest, huge tall trees, 
and there's a monster in the woods. Are we talking daytime or, or nighttime? It's dusk. Gloaming? Gloaming, there's some fog. Okay, so I was gonna say- There's is, noises. Is it cold outside? Very cold. Okay. And they're underdressed. Okay. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, um, okay. let's see what we can find. We want, we want to, we, we want to feel the, 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 the lost and loneliness of our protagonist in the story, but also the fear, right? There's a thick layer of fear yeah, in yeah. those trees. The fear is thick to quite thick. I don't know, I feel like it feels a little hopeful there. Too much hope. I was gonna say, Charles, can you dial back the hope? Yeah, I'm often asked to dial back on the hope, you know? Okay. That sounds like a question mark to me. Right. Yeah, there's, there's some, like, did I hear something? There we go. What's the under, what's the tone coming in? The one that makes it feel. So, yeah, and in terms of right, how, what's going on, I've got. Uh, there's an emotion coming from mm -hmm. the one thing underneath that comes up out, right there. So we're getting, we're getting two notes that come in at the same time there. So we have our, like our main signal. It's already pretty affected, but it's this sort of like pad. paddy kind yeah. of, you know, multi-tap delay thing. And then that's feeding to two different uh, crystallizers, which are sort of like, I mean, it's kind of like a plug-in version of the old Eventide harmonizer. And one's down an octave, so you get that low thing. And then... So two crystallizers. Yeah. Okay, I got you. And we get one that's up a semitone from the original. So we're getting that sort of, you know, that mi uh, minor second. Okay. Um, and then, I mean, we could do, we could also make the, uh, the low one not an octave. We could make it, you know, like maybe down, you know, one, one note shy, one semitone shy. Just so, you know, there's no safe interval to hold on to. I don't know, that could be one. And then just maybe some bending too is like a... Maybe we, for our rhythmic thing, maybe we want to have a bass instead of a okay. guitar. Yeah, maybe this bass is the monster. In the woods. In the woods. Okay. It's cold. Very cold. Smell of cedar. And then... Can you explain the creative process for making music for film and TV? I will try. Um, and, and I mean, actually, one of the most fun things about my job here has been just to have proximity to some other really great, you know, film composers. I mean, JJ's worked with you know, Michael Giacchino on several films, and obviously John Williams on, on the Star Wars stuff, and um, and then we worked most recently with uh, Thomas Newman on uh, on our show Castle Rock, and it seems like everyone on some level kind of approaches it sort of the same way in that you know they want to watch they want to watch something and they want to react to it is there a, is there a tempo that this sort of feels like to me is it do, do i just sort of do i see some action happening that kind of implies a certain rhythm or a speed uh, is this going to be a fast thing or a slow thing or is this going to be like a really minimal piece of music or is it something that you know you try to start just put some parameters on it from the beginning, you're hoping to narrow choices down as you go. So that's sort of the first one. Like, where is their music? You know, how much music do we have? And then, uh, and then you often find that, oh, you know, these three pieces that happen throughout, those think those those should probably be kind of the same thing. Like, those are uh, that's a theme, you know, or it's like a recurring thing, you know. And then you know you kind of go to, um, well, I think at least a lot of people they go to whatever the instrument or whatever their palette is that they can quickly try to generate ideas. Well, I've been using the, the Axe FX3 a lot. And part of, part of why I really like the Axe FX3 is, I, I mean, I had Axe FX2, which was great, but the, but the interface is really this tiny little monochrome LCD screen, and now it's actually really easy to navigate around. Um, you know, and it's sort of endlessly tweakable in terms of like all the onboard effects and different speaker cabinets and amp sims and stuff. Um, 
into a, a long reverb too to be kind of a patty thing as well. It's you know, fun for rhythmic delay kind of stuff too. So this is actually using the Axe FX and then and I have the, the Rockman modules down here patched into the effects loop of this. tend to fall into the category of like uh, very 80 sounding or slightly less 80 sounding. If it's like, can't come up with a musical idea, like, you know, a melody or something that feels fresh or just, just excites you enough to keep moving forward, then sometimes it'll be like trying to do something that's intentionally just non-melodic, you know, try to like just take that off the table in some way. Um, so maybe that's then like focusing more on the piece that is about rhythm and like rhythmic sounding instruments or sometimes I'll get like really preoccupied with like yeah but what is like the sort of harmonic movement of this thing I want I want like these sort of more satisfying chordal movement or whatever make it about a bass note and a melody and then the other one is is well then find a sound that's cool like find a sound that you haven't heard or, or just a sound that's fun to play because I think you know especially for composing now or, or making pop songs or whatever music production like you know you're you have access to way too many sounds and way too little time to possibly ever browse through them. But, you know, whether it's like hit the shuffle button in Omnisphere to find a patch that you've never heard before and it's fun and you just, you know, to, to get yourself to stumble onto something new or, or, you know, with guitars, it's like, yeah, effects and all that stuff is, you know, can, uh, can be inspiring. Uh, here's the scenario. So it's a little dramatic. Well, let's go with it. Movies are dramatic. So there is a guy. He um, he's been searching for mm -hmm. treasure under the ocean his whole life, but he just keeps facing tragedy. His entire family dies, and on his wife's deathbed, she's the last one to go. She looks at him and says, "I know you can find it." Oh, and boy. this is the scene at the end of the movie where he finds it. Bottom of the ocean. Um, is he vegetarian? He eats fish. Okay. Does he have a fear of um, the color orange by any chance? I don't think so. No. Okay. Uh, All right. That would definitely change. The so it's usually sort of two kind of go-to things. Yeah. I'm kind of seeing like some slow-mo dramatic footage and we're like, in my head. Is he gonna find it? It's like you know he's gonna find it, but you're waiting, like, maybe he won't. Maybe it's like a Coen Brothers film and it has no ending. But he finds it. So yeah. maybe this, these are gonna just sort of be some kind of chords that sort of underpin whatever our main, more sort of melodic hero sound will be. Is delay the sound of hope? The sound of time. It actually is. That's deep. <laughs> I feel like I can stop everything I'm doing and just retire. It's like, guys, we found it. We found the sound of time. Ooh, a little grit in there. Is the grit like the emotional ending, like the... That chord really threw it somewhere. Although that is kind of like a... There's a little bit of that. Yeah. Has that been what a, does that, that evoke for you? I mean, that's it's sort of like that, that like, wonderment, you okay. know? Okay, kind okay. Of um, we don't really know what the treasure is either. Yeah. That's the other thing. It's Maybe a, the whole As he's opening no the treasure, we cut to black, of course. We cut to the credits. Absolutely. You know, we never see, uh, I was like. <laughs> it's 
getting very dark. He dies. <laughs> <laughs> right at the end, he's reaching for the I, treasure and... It is kind of crazy though. It's kind of... It's a really cool experience. I mean, this could seem silly, but it is actually the emotion of a single note. Like, you yeah. can't tell the story of finding a treasure if you suddenly died because of a note <laughs> on your instrument. That is fascinating. It's something that's so obvious, but it's not really that obvious. It is when you're sitting here thinking like this. Thanks so much for watching this episode and thank you Charles for leading us and guiding us through the soundscapes of TV and movie. It was really fascinating. I enjoyed it. If you liked it, like me, hit like, subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. In the description below there are links to the Patreon, the jhsshow.com, there's all kinds of fun stuff and Band Lab. You can jam along with jams from past episodes. That's really it. I just, I just need to get out of here, you know? I need to go back to that under the ocean soundscape and set for a while. That's what I'm gonna do, bye.